Hey everybody, this is Patriot Torch again, and this time we're talking about uh, millennials versus Gen Z versus what else are we talking about? Gay marriage um, and some other topics small, about the government, small, government. small government and how it's all connected and what we can do about the issues that we have. Um, now to begin with, we're debating whether Ethan's actually a Gen Z or, <laughs> or a millennial. Um, and it says online that it's like something to 90, 90, 1996. I and, found 95. And he, you were born in 95, right? So technically, some sites say he's Gen Z. Some sites says he's millennial. He's both. In but my I, view. I, he's cut, you're I out. identify <laughs> as Gen Z. He's coming out as Gen Z. <laughs> Got you. I'm a trans generation. You're trans a trans gen. Trans gen. Trans gen. Sure, that's what And, and yeah. so... <laughs> But I, I was born like one day before 1995, uh, uh, so apparently I'm a millennial. But yeah, you know, you're, I really, you're than the I'm just <laughs> now. Now, with that being said, there are some a lot of issues with millennials, and we wanted to talk about it because it's pretty upsetting when millennials are right. They're not getting married as much. The um, they're not making. They're well, not buying houses. I, right? I would like to throw the statistics because I spent a lot of time. Yeah, those doing, had me. Uh, analytical statistics or just, Very just studying statistics Brilliant. last Brilliant. night. Yeah, so fifty percent of millennials do not want to own a home, which is alarming. Thirty-nine percent of millennials do not. No, it's only thirty-nine percent of millennials want to start a family. And 52% of millennials want to earn a higher salary. And as far as antidepressants and anxiety medication, millennials more than double the rate of the rest of the country of being clinically diagnosed uh, dep depression and anxiety. Wow. And I think that it's a fear of responsibility, a fear of commitment, and then you look at People growing up that go and play sports teams don't win championships and they get trophies. I think the issue began when teachers and professors told these kids that it was okay that they stay kids forever. You get an award for participating even though you suck at the sport. Right, and even more, <laughs> the more alarming statistics to me was 33% of millennials believe that George W. Bush killed more people than Joseph Stalin. And 66% 66, 66 of millennials do not know what Auschwitz, Auschwitz is or the significance of wow. Auschwitz. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Shocking It's pretty shocking. an understatement. I'm, I might even still be forgetting some of those statistics that I looked at. I was, I was doing a lot it, of analytics last it's night. It's funny because the, the millennials, they seem to hate everything that's going to make them happy. <laughs> we we got to be like, very careful uh, here because no, we are in this boat, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm you two. Not me. Okay. Yeah, I'm a human being. I don't go along with this propaganda but, of all the leftist so crap. I, well, I'd like to get to... I'm dead genning you. The, you're a millennial. I'd like to get to the why. Because on top of that, yeah, exactly. when, when millennials were also asked... What are their top two concerns? Number one was global warming. And, and number two is salary inequality. Let alone these people, millennials in general, who, whoever is taking these polls, they are lonely, they do not have money, they are overrun with debt. Millennials average twice as much debt as any any generation right. before them. Yeah, and th we have to start on. <laughs> there's so many parts to this. Okay. But one thing is, look, they don't want to get married. That that's what makes you happy. They you have, have to, let's, you have to let's, find let's, a wife or let's husband. Let's break down one statistic at a time. So, and I think I think we should probably start. I think the most the the, the lightest one we can talk about is the one that 52 percent don't want a higher salary. So what that tells me is 52 percent of people are retarded. Wait, wait, wait. One. <laughs> don't want a higher salary? No, don't want a no. higher salary. Only 52... Sorry, I digress. Or do you, do you only, it backwards? Yeah, I, backwards. Only, okay, but still. Only 52% said that they wanted to earn a higher salary. Yeah, that's... So 48% of millennials that Okay, 48%. I'm sorry for you 4% in the margin, but like... I can't even believe that that's true. They, like, they actually don't want to make more money? Because I believe they... 
they have no incentive to work harder. Well, okay, so let's 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 break this down too. So, like, what is the statistic that are like, let's say, democratic, socialist, or whatever? They're all socialists. The, they're, well, okay, so and let's not say all because here we three so, said all so, that are uh, taking yeah. all that are taking these polls, which also leads me to the question: Who 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 who's got time for this? Right? I guess they're on a they're on like a clock. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't got got time. Time. I ain't got time to take a poll. Yeah, the millennials like, are you're taking work. the poll. Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> I got too much shit the hardworking me. millennials aren't the ones taking the polls. Now it makes all sense. But, but at the same time, it's like, look, they're lonely, right? That's part of the depression factor. They're lonely, but they don't want to get married. Well, that's why you're freaking depressed because you're alone think, and, think, and you're going swiping through Tinder, but you're not actually with anybody. And then another thing is the college debt you mentioned. Look, they're, the college is skyrocketing. It was like med the median income hasn't even changed since but the 80s. The majority but of this them, they're, college not, debt is they're not learning anything. The, another poll that I looked at, it was, right. it was so alarming. The, the graduating seniors that were millennials to the Gen Z that were incoming freshmen, the ones in this poll scored worse on civics and economics. The seniors did. The millennial seniors yes. scored worse than the incoming freshmen that were Gen Z. They got less educated the four years that they were in school. And these, these are top schools I were looking at. Schools like Yale, Stanford, Harvard, like the premier schools in, in the land is, is where these polls are coming. It is unbelievable. Like, shocking is an understatement. Yeah, and see, like, I, I, I kind of want to dive into some of this stuff, because, like, the idea that you don't want to make a higher wage, so, like, I think I think it would be more interesting to kind of dive into each of these statistics and talk about them. So, like, the, the idea that you don't want to make more money is, I think, a, an ideological belief, because they see making money as an unethical thing. Materialistic. It's, it's materialistic. It's, I'm taking from people that could need it or whatever. I don't I don't quite understand it because it's not something I believe, but I think that's something that's going on there. And I, I think we have to kind of like talk to people and realize that making money isn't unethical. Yeah. Right? They, because There's nothing the ones, wrong with that. They're the ones that believe, right, the 1% is evil. So, of course, if you keep telling them that, eventually they're like, well, dang, if I'm rich, I'm an evil man. It's like, well, that's not what happens. It's what you do with the money that makes you evil or good. It, the money's just a tool, just like gas in my car. I think they have a skewed image of what a wealthy man is. Yeah. My friends of mine that have the most money, that do the best, work nonstop. I believe to liberals, their image of a wealthy person is a fat cat that sits at a desk with his feet up all day smoking a cigar while <laughs> he has peasants running around doing his work for him. And that, that's not the case. <laughs> that is not, not the case. case. Yeah, people, people that are wealthy work extremely hard. And it, it makes most millennials look lethargic if almost 50% have no incentive to work harder because they just walk around with their hand out. Yeah, I I would be okay with that if they couldn't vote my money away, right? <laughs> because then, honestly, look, if 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 they didn't have a way to affect my life because they do because they can vote, right? I and mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't vote, but like. I, I don't mind having less competition to some extent because that makes it easier for me to move up ladders that I would otherwise be fighting people for. But it, it, I, I agree. <laughs> so, I agree. Like, it's, so, it's so still, for the right people, it's advantageous, right? right. So it's, it works well it for some be, people. But, but at the same time, it's like we, if we have a society that's degrading or degenerating because of the uh, say failure in the educational system, then we, we can't turn a blind eye to but, it because then but it becomes with, society without being said, collapse. more millennials have degrees than any other generation. Well, I mean, but there's a lot of useless degrees being handed out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, I've, I've had some interesting discussions with some people about, like, education and kind of how it's failed people. Because I think there's a huge problem that people, I know I wasn't taught, I kind of, but I was kind of, like, conscious of, like, hey, I need to pick a job that I can actually do something with, right? You went to school to learn a skill. Yeah, kind of, sort of, uh, or at least the starting of it, and then I digressed a bit, but I'm doing okay where I'm at right now. But, like, I went and looked up what I thought I would do would make. I don't think people are doing this, or seeing how many jobs there are out there. Like, how many, how many political science majors do you think can get a job? Right they don't get jobs. Well, that's why they're depressed. Statistically, they're less like. I mean, but there's some that do, right? But some. But the depression, I almost. 
Where, yeah, where do you begin? Oh, I know where to begin. This, they're getting into huge amounts of debt because they're forced by their parents and forced by society telling them, you have to go to college or you're a piece of crap, basically, and you don't, your life sucks if you don't go to college. And so they're like, okay, I don't know what to study, but, but I'm just going to go. Well, I think and it's then something they get even worse than that. So, they, well, they get, so do I. They're they not, get I think, I think $80,000 of debt, and then they're wondering, people are wondering why they're depressed. Well, the, they have a huge pressure on their shoulders now with tons of money they don't know how to pay off, and then they have monthly payments that are sucking their income dry. They just, I think, I think a lot of the problem is, and I even struggle with this to some extent. It's, it's, it's hard to see the ladder right now, and I think, I think a lot of people weren't given, given the tools to see the ladder, so it's easy to get into a dark hole, let's say. And I think also, we, we've, we've been kind of, and I'm gonna, if you've watched Jordan Peterson, you're gonna kind of hear a lot of what he says in this. But I think we lack a lot of meaning. So we, we lack a lot of purpose. So that's right? where the depression so, comes from. Yeah, so yeah, I, think, I think we have this idea that you're going, you, we're, we're chasing happiness too much. Because like, I wonder how many of these people that are depressed, ask them what they're chasing. Are they chasing something to be happy? Or are they chasing something to be meaningful? Right? And if you're not chasing something, like, I may not be happy all the time, but I, get, I don't get out of bed in the morning and dread going to work. Because yeah, I do, yeah, I do cool that. stuff, and it, it, it serves a purpose, and it's working towards something. And I think that a lot of young people don't have that. And I don't know where yeah, you get that. Yeah, that's a good point. That's because no one's telling them to follow their real the uh, talents and things. They're just told go to college to make a lot of money. You, you're gonna, you go to college to be a lawyer. Even if you don't care about it, they're like, oh well, I'm gonna go because it makes a lot of money, duh. So I'm just gonna get into a debt. And they don't have, they're not like guided in a direction to where you nurture their actual talents and passions so that they feel like, oh, I have a purpose in society. I'm gonna do this for people. It's more like, how do I make money for myself? It's a well, selfish uh, way of thinking. That, I think, that's I think it's depression. okay. Well, I think you can find meaning in that, and like the the idea that I think. <clears throat> Like to pursue a career that pays you a lot of money is not a bad thing. So not like, if and, the, and and money like, is the end goal. If the well, money is the end goal, it's a terrible thing. Probably, but what what I do to kind of like let's say ease the suffering of existence, right? Is I go I go do stuff that I like to do. So the job allows me to do things that I find enjoyable, and then the things that I do on the side, I find a purpose. And there's maybe things further down the road that lead to cool things and I have an aim or a goal that I'm trying to reach and if you don't have that your life is going to suck yeah absolutely like, I, I was like I mean a couple years ago I was probably in a pretty dark place let's say emotionally yeah. and like I kind of dug myself out of it to some extent I mean I still like life's hard like I, I think and I think we kind of got we got 18 years or so, and some people have gotten longer because they still live at home. You got 18 years of being coddled. It's another percentage. Like that's like that's if you're not challenged, like if you don't get challenged, you're you're just weak. And then anytime that ch you get challenged after not being challenged, it's like working out muscles. Like you, if you don't do the reps, you're not going to get anywhere. And then when you actually get faced with a challenge, like. If I had to do one pull up, I'm I'm screwed, right? <laughs> so if you don't have if you don't do the reps to yeah, get there, yeah, if you true. don't if you don't go through failing and like the real world, yeah, because there people are in a bubble for a long time, even into their twenties if they're going into college and they're only in that college uh, arena. There was like a video I posted recently of this girl at UNC, and she she got arrested because she there was people that are against abortion having like a protest at the college campus. Uh, using their free speech, and she goes there, she's totally triggered, steals their signs, and just starts running away with it, and the, the guy filming is like, hey, that's my sign, officer, this person's stealing my stuff, and then the officer ar arrests her, and she doesn't understand why she's being arrested. She's just like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I'm being arrested right now. It's like, you, well, you're stealing something. She, she thought she was going to get put in time out. Like, that, yeah. that's kind of what that felt like to me. Like, no, like, you, you have left your parents' house. You don't get time out anymore. And <laughs> yeah. and timeout was a way to kind of like 
warn you not to do certain things right. and jail but, is time out basically but the, and so these are like, adults these are yeah. adults that don't, don't understand free speech and don't understand private property that's a big problem if the college system can't even teach those basic i'm not principles. i'm not going there today but I don't want to misspeak, but there is another radical number of millennials that still live at home with their parents. And the next number that I want to look at is why 50% of millennials don't want to own a home. And we can tie this one in just so we kill two birds with one stone. Why only 39% of millennials want to get married and start a family. When asked why they don't want to own a home and when asked why they don't want to get married and start a family they want more leisure time these are these are the top the top answers they gave when when they were asked why they don't want to do these things they want they want leisure time they don't want to start a family they feel like a child and being married is a burden they it don't is. well it is they're not wrong let's say but it's is it a burden worth taking on and i think we've i think we've gotten to a point as a society where We've been told that that isn't a burden worth taking on. But it's I a burden that, that brings you but, joy. No, it's. A, and I'm not saying that that's what is the right answer. I'm saying that's kind of where we're at. And I think what that does to us is it sells us short of something that is incredibly meaningful. A miracle. Uh, yeah. It's, so, like, the, yeah. and I, I mean, you'll probably be able to talk to this in a few weeks, at, at least to some greater level, right. Ethan. Because when you have your child, the, the way that you operate is going to completely change uh, it, already, I mean, it already has. Well, it probably has to some extent, but it, it'll be more visible. I would Structured, say. yeah. Yeah. So, like, you're going to think about all the actions you make at work more seriously. You're going to think about, like, how, what can you do to make your life better for you and your family? Like, these things, and, and right now we're being robbed of that. And it's like, it's like the idea you're going to take on the biggest challenge that you can and try to do it. Yeah. And I think we're not doing that as a system. I don't get off where people think that having a child isn't a beautiful thing. And I might even be able to tie a, a third a third subject into this. But as far as not wanting to own a home, millennials said that they want to travel and see the world, which is shocking to me because almost half of them don't want to earn a higher wage. And traveling is expensive. And you, you need a higher wage to travel. So it's kind of like a pipe dream but then they, they want to have leisure to do what? Be they alone wanna... and depressed? I mean, what's the point of the leisure time if you're not going to share it with somebody you love? You know well, what I'm it's, saying? It's, it's, the, it's the idea of having your cake and eating it too. Like, like you, want, want, you want everything, but you don't want to... You, you yeah, have exactly. to sacrifice something. And, uh, and you want to... Like, That's I a good point. They want everything. They want all the pleasures of life without actually having to work for, to, to actually get those pleasures in life. For example, like, there obviously, there's this mentality, like, how many girls can you have sex with? Or they just want to go to the clubs every night, and they just want to, uh, you know, screw every girl they can find. It's, it's part of the mentality of not wanting to get married and stuff. But that's a, a life of sadness, because you don't actually get a connection with people. You don't appreciate sex itself. And so it goes, it goes, it leads into the whole abortion problem, too. But... I'm not getting into that today, but that's part of the, the problem with this depression of not being connected to people, not knowing how to get con, uh, make a family. That's destroying society in terms of your happiness because that's part of what happiness is, is having a family. If you don't have a family, you're just alone on your computer and you're not, you're not going to feel the, 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 the pleasures of having that interaction with people, with, with your, with your so loved ones. The polling data also showed the women that were answering these questions they did not want to have children until they were at least 32. And my first, my first thought was, it gets a lot harder for a woman to carry a child the older that she gets. Absolutely. Like, the idea your biological clock is ticking isn't just a saying. No, it's a you know, total truth. Like, women recover a lot better from pregnancy when they're younger. I'm not, you know, I don't force people's hand on anything, but, like, I'm, like, me as a father, like, I feel truly blessed that me having my son at 23, my son will be 16 years old when I'm 38. I believe I'll still be able to play basketball with him yeah. in the driveway. When he's 18, I'll be 41. I'll have a lot of time yeah. with oh, yeah. my children because I had them younger. That's true. And That's also true. the 
the age that people are getting married is getting pushed back and pushed back. It's this mentality, it's a lie that they're, they're getting told from different people. Oh, your life ends when you're married. Oh, your life ends when you have a baby. So you've got to push that off as far as possible because you hear that all the time in well, mainstream media. Like, it's your, it's your a life, lie. Your life is just beginning when you get married. That's when your life have, really you starts. Children. You're right. And the other problem I have is that both the men and the women said that they were concerned about finance, finances. You will never look at your finances and say, okay, now is the perfect time to have a child. Yeah. You won't, no matter how much money you well, make. Well, see, that's the idea, and I'm kind of, I'm butchering it, but the idea, like, and again, I'm going to be using a lot of what Jordan Peterson talks about for this, because it, it's super relevant. Like, like, he talks about this all the time. And the idea is, like, life is, like, it's full of misery and it's very challenging. But what we have as a society and as people is a moral responsibility to go out and take on that challenge. To, to, the idea is to go and basically carry the biggest burden you can up the biggest hill you can. And, 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 and that's what life is. And, and to do that, that, that aim of doing that is what gives you meaning, what gives you purpose. and what. It's, it's definitely, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't like to call it a burden because then it, it gives it too much of a negative well, connotation. I think it's not a burden. It's more of like an honor well, and to burden, do the right thing. It's a burden honor. doesn't, in, isn't inherently a bad thing. It, it doesn't, could be a yeah, load. It, right, it doesn't it could, have to be negative. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's something that you're carrying. It's, it's a responsibility. And I think, I think that's kind of where we're failing is like you, you, you get this constant stream of like, I have the right to do this. I have the right for that. I have the right for this. It's a, con yeah. it's a constant, ever-expanding realm of what your rights are. Right, and, right. But there's not the equivalent amount of responsibility that goes along with it. And I mm -hmm. think when we're, I think the reason we're so like depressed, let's say, as a generation, is we're not taking yes. on the responsibility. So. And, and there's a lot of drugs, obviously. Well, I think life is meaningless without struggle. I would never look at having a son and think that it was going to be a walk in the park. But I will endure the challenge because I feel like that's what I'm here to do is to pass along my, my genetics and, yeah. and to pass along like the, the teachings and the philosophies and ideologies that I've picked up in my time spent here. The millennials are not being taught the basic of, um, necessities for a civilization to exist. A lot of millennials, they don't even see the point of having a kid. Dude, dude your human race isn't going to exist if you don't have a kid. You don't get that? It's really simple. But no one's being taught the simple, uh, uh, simple necessities for life, to, uh, having a pleasurable life. Part of it is going out uh, you know, having a family, having a kid, getting your own house. Well, I, I mean, worry that it's just I worry that people would put their careers before having a family. Like, like even before, yeah, exactly. even before exactly. we were pregnant. Like my, like my wife at home was the most important part of my life. You know, I, I did. I saw in the polling data a lot of people were concerned about advancing their careers, which isn't a bad thing. I just don't know where. I don't know where it was taught that like having a career is more important than having a family. Well, like feminists, they're just like, oh, don't get married to a guy because they're oppressing you. Why don't you advance your career and not have a kid? That's where it comes from. It's always the, the leftists. So, well, they're, they're the greatest feminists, I'm going to cut you off, Travis. I've done that twice now. <laughs> the, the greatest fem, the great, greatest article I've ever read that was written by a feminist was a woman that was in her 50s that was saying that it's too late for her now and she's not married, she doesn't have any kids and she said that she's very depressed because she can't hang out with her friends from work because they're married and they have children and she has nothing in common with them and she was she was very depressed she's like you know i have dogs and cats but it's not the same her mother had brainwashed her into thinking that being with a man was a bad thing because right. her mother despised her father right and right. she went through her whole life putting her career first and she missed she missed out on the regular activities of life, like well, having a family. I mean, that's that's sad, and she's courageous to admit that, though. I do give her that credit. It's on the Daily Wire, too. It's important that people understand this before they lose out on the, 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 the beauties of life, which people call the end of your life now. Having a kid is the end of your life. No, it's not. Having a um, you know family and getting married is not the end of your life. But of course, I mean, that's, this is one thing. There's also other topics that are causing problems in this, in, in this uh, generation, too. 
Um, one thing that we haven't touched on yet uh, was the um, people being prescribed pharmaceutical drugs for antidepressants. That doesn't make you less depressed. That's, well, that's, that's not. That's just like a patch on a leaky pipe, is what it is. You're not fixing the problem. The, and I think it comes back to this whole idea of meaning. And like, it, it's. I'm probably beating a dead horse to some extent, but it's so important. And like, I, 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 I have. I don't have a lot of things like that I can say provides meaning. But like, I have like, I use my dog as like a lot of, like a purpose. Like I was like that. I've got car payment. I got bills. I got all this, and then I've got this animal that I have to take care of. And and I take an immense amount of responsibility in taking care of that dog. Like it's and I can. I can kind of scale it to greater things, but I see how how that activity kind of gives me a drive that I would not otherwise have. Right. I, I could see myself being in a darker place, and I try to look at anything that I do as what is it is it meaningful? Is it is it something that is adding to like what I'm doing? You know, and I think more people need to do that. And I think if you're not at least looking at it like that or trying to figure that out, I think you're gonna be stuck in a dark place. Yeah, we need to have a mentality where I'm here as part of like a cog in the whole machine of society to, to help it move, to help it grow and progress. And we, I have a purpose in, in my life to make society, make sure that we, we progress in a good way that protects our freedoms and, and make uh, people more successful in society. And, and in order to do that, I have to care about other people. In order, because if I don't care about other people, I wouldn't have any necessity to even make this show, to make this sure that we're talking about it, to help other people understand certain things and make sure that we're not just lost in the dark and not caring about anyone and just being like, oh, I'm just here to make money for myself. I just want to be, you know, I'm, it's not about myself. It's not about that. It's about how do I, uh, you know, provide my gifts and talents to you so that we can progress together as a society to make sure that we're not being depressed and all this crap because that's what happens when people are just so self-consumed they're so into themselves and what they're entitled and and what their you know their view is not understanding how they can help others it's becoming more of like a a selfish thing that I think that's part of the problem too with with not wanting to get married all this so it's all about based on the selfish mentality that's a big problem well how would you coach somebody that copes with depression to walk through life with meaning a sense of purpose because I I have I've spoken to people that I know deal with this issue and I don't understand it because I I don't personally cope with depression I believe that it may come down to having idle hands um, just becoming stagnant so, so my my way of processing it is like, you you have to look at the 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 question that and again like I said it's going to be a lot of Jordan Peterson here that you're going to hear, but the idea is you look five years in advance and say where you want to be, and then if you do everything right, and then aim for that. Like two year, five year, ten year plan. Yes. Right. So you say where would I like to be in five years, and then you would say where would I be in five years if I didn't do things right and then kind of work from there and try to build some somewhere that you want to be. Try to build something, and, and another, that's the yeah, idea. This actually reminded me of something that's really important, is the people's ability to have self-confidence in being able to accomplish something. Because some people, they're just, the leftist mentality, which is in, in uh, just totally taking over a lot of millennials' mindsets, is you're oppressed, you can't do anything, white people are oppressing you, you are you're just have to sit there and take it and just try to vote for Bernie to save your ass and have get you a handout. Conservatives are oppressing you. Yeah. No, you need I mean, to do everyone, it yourself. Yeah. You, need to, you need to fight for your own life. You need to, you need to build your own stuff. That, that's kind of, I think that's part of it too, because I know people that have talents, they don't do anything with it. When they think that no one believes in them, you know that, that's that's a big problem. Is that people need to understand the power they actually have in, in in being able to create something. Yeah. So I was happy to do my statistics poll last night because it is really it was really interesting to me to look at the numbers. And I was just telling Travis here I don't remember what put me on the subject, but the further down the rabbit hole I went, I was just really alarmed at, at what I was finding and 
it it's just alarming to me to see that our generation and even people that are 10 years older than us like the majority of them have, have failed how many people do you know that are still living at home with their parents that that are in mm-hmm. debt that they're not self-sufficient yeah. i mean it's it's downright depressing and like i think i think we have to look at us at, at ourselves and i think it's 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 how do we get that? Because it's it, it breaks my heart. Because like, I I I have been fortunate enough to kind of dig myself out of that same hole that I see so many people in, and you see you see the memes and all the stuff. I mean, joking about suicide, but it's it, it's a like some of them are funny, and it's like you can kind of look at them and kind of enjoy the humor of it. But right. you know that like there's an underlying truth a deep behind, yeah. and and and, 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 it, yeah. and like I I see like. Because I, I kind of have been there, and I've been fortunate enough to dig my way out, like I said. And, like, I don't know what to do. Like, because you can't go, like, I don't know. You can't really go and be like, are you seriously, like, suicidal? Like, and then what, how do you take, I, I how do you take the responsibility? Like, and, and I mean, here I am talking about finding meaning. But, like, how, how do you as a person take the response? Like, just, I don't know how to fix people. Like, well, well there's that's, a, that, it, that's, you bring up a great point. It's like, what do we do about these suicidal people? Because it's not just people that are not self-sufficient in this in the millennial generation. It's also people that are no longer here. They're dead because they overdosed on drugs. That's a large one. And also, it's a large part of it, I, I think, it's because they've been disconnected from God in their, in, in their souls and their spirits. They're not connected to God as much. They don't care about that as much. Maybe. I think and people I, overindulge. They overindulged in instant gratification. Yeah. And they didn't look at, like, so you, you were talking about a five-year goal. Well, there was a, a, a man that I'd met as an older, older fellow, a very wise man, told me, he said, son, you need to always have a two-year plan, a five-year plan, and a ten-year plan. And that always stuck with me. Yeah. From, no, and it's smart. Forward. And it's smart because it, it leads, because if, if let's say you're in, in, a, in a boat on an ocean, and you're just kind of drifting around, but let's say an island appears in the distance, right? You have an, an and let's say you need something. You need food. You need water. You need well, you want to put your feet on shore. You you then have an aim. You're not aimlessly wandering about. And I think a lot of people have this. They don't have an aim. They don't have somewhere that they're going. They don't see a future like in general and it's 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 and if they if they do have a name a lot of millennials are brainwashed by their role models look at let's look at their role models they're in hollywood they're the rappers that are doing a lot of drugs they're they're emulating the lifestyle of the people they worship and and then when i criticize these rappers and stuff that overdose oh they 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 hate me they think i'm crazy that i can even criticize these people that are overdosing on drugs that are rappers well, it's like no those people are influencing you to have that kind of lifestyle it has affected me personally when i was a teenager and and i know that i i figured it out like you i dug myself out of it realized how i was being manipulated how i was influenced by culture but the pop culture and the music and the movies these are the things that are also contributing to the depression of millennials that are trying to have this instant gratification lifestyle and prostitutes and hoes and having all this sex and clubs and doing drugs because the rapper says it's so cool and it's not cool it's a life of a loser and so that's something that's really important is understanding you know how do we change the role models of the millennials to to make so that we can you know that that's a big problem well and I, i don't even know how much of the role models play like i think i think there's just like we have to get past this general notion that life isn't worth living like, and I don't know how you do it because everybody's purpose or goal or aim or whatever you want to call it is going to be completely different. And I think, and I think people have this like misconceived notion that like there isn't going to be suffering. Like life has been suffering since life has existed. Like back to when there was just bacterial cells swimming around. Yeah, well, but, it's a mix of like, suffering like, and also happiness. Well, and like the. And, like, just, like, since humans have existed, like, you've been trying to, like, things have been trying to kill you. And we're at a point now where we're not really having those same challenges, right? We're actually having a lot less suffering well, in general exactly. than, but than previous like, generations. We're, we're, but we're suffering in a different way now. So a we, spiritual we, way. Yes. And how do you go about reorientating yourself to where you don't have to suffer this way? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's... I think this time right now in this day and age is the greatest time to live in the history 
of the planet, and we have more people that are depressed and diagnosed with anxiety today than ever before. And I don't understand, I mean, I'm not a therapist, I'm definitely not so I do. There's a deeply rooted issue in a lot of people that are in our generation and even, you know, younger kids coming up, I worry about, like, where do you go to solve this problem? Is it a social fabric issue? As far as the, the drug addictions go, I think there is corruption in pharmaceuticals. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I know firsthand experience from, from talking to people. Um, you have someone that goes and tears his ACL, has ACL surgery, and gets prescribed oxycodone, and then he gets addicted to his oxycodone. He goes and you know gets his subscription refilled up two or three times, even though he only needed the the pills for the first few days, and then yeah, they, exactly. they refuse to refill his subscription, and now he goes and buys heroin and gets well, hooked on heroin. And see, here's That's the thing with this: right the the the, the the drug issue apparently, and it ties kind of back into this idea of the lack of meaning, because like if if the if you're suffering right, and you don't have anything that makes the suffering worthwhile or feel good, you you are going to seek those things, whether it be alcohol, whether it be the Mar- oxygen, marijuana. The heroin, not, I mean, I'm less, I don't really care about the mar- marijuana is like a non-issue to me, but like the pain pills. Alcohol, because marijuana kind of just makes you more sensitive. Right, well, but like substance, the pain pills, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, substance. Okay, fair enough. And like, so alcohol numbs your senses, right? So it kind of takes you out of the suffering. Obviously, pain pills do the same thing. And I think like when you look at like statistics of like older people that get prescribed oxycontin, they get right off of it. Once the pain's gone, they're right back off of it because they have they've established something. Yeah, the millennials are trying to find the the wrong solution for the problem because they they're having a spiritual problem, but they want the pills to solve their spiritual problem. That's never going to work. That's why they get addicted. That's why they overdose because they're trying to keep they're trying to reach a place that you can't get through drugs. You can't do it. Yeah. You have to go. You you have to go to God. I mean, I don't, I don't know how an atheist lives their life. I have no idea how they do it. I, I personally was, you know, saved by Jesus Christ. That changed my life. I stopped doing drugs. I stopped. I understand the principles of Christianity. That actually helps you have a happy so life. So I also used the church to straighten my life out. But we can't. We can't. I, we can't, I, yeah, can't, re- I can't recommend I, that for everybody. Yeah, I refuse to push. I don't push my religion on anybody. But I think there. I think I'm not pushing. What, I'm telling you my testimony what, right here's now. Here's what I'm saying. And and like so like my my dug my dig out was. A lot, a lot of it was kind of this driving group that I'm with, and then just general like things going okay, and kind of going the way I want them to, thinking about where I want to be, and kind of working towards it. And then I've made a bunch of friends in the past year that I wouldn't have otherwise, and that has helped me out a lot. And then like the idea that, the idea that you're gonna. I, I, it, it, like the idea that alcohol is the fix, because like I've had multiple conversations recently with people, and like the 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 thing is like alcohol is the fix that makes your life worthwhile, and th- that's the wrong move because you're gonna sink so much of. Th- I mean, like think about what you could sink that much. Like you're gonna spend money on alcohol, and then look, I'm not. I'm not saying be a teetotaler or something like that. I'll drink. I drink beer, and it's good, and I have a good time I'm drinking. More. Right, I'm there yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, but don't don't make that the basis of making your existence worthwhile because it's going to be a life sucking abyss. Yeah, like, exactly. and, I, and like when I was talking to the person, it it literally broke my heart. Like, I don't want like I don't want to see people living like that. That's right. like how do you and I don't know how you re or you orientate yourself, but like obviously if that's what you're doing to survive, you need to reevaluate it, not continue it and look to like. Think about something that you would like to do, and then think about the money that you're using for whatever your fix is, and re- redistributing it to that. Something else, yeah. yeah. Addiction is toxic, and I would like to clarify, I don't demonize marijuana, I don't smoke marijuana, but I do think it should be legal because the government is terrible and I could buy weed in middle school. Um, but just moving forward from that, yeah, I do. I do think that addiction is terrible across the board not yeah. just alcohol prescription drugs at that if you're addicted to anything that means that you're really depending on it for some kind of some sort of happiness that you're never going to get from it because the, at the end of the day i'm sober 
and I, I love it, and I feel great. And it's just these millennials are trying to find happiness in the wrong places. Well, like, that's I, really what it is. And I don't think it's that you. Uh, for me, it's not that I feel great that I don't do drugs. Let's say, but I don't feel bad that I don't. Me neither. That's I mean, that's the thing. Like, I can go two, three, four months without having a beer, and I don't feel worse for it. Me neither. Like, I, mean, I do my best work well, with yeah, clarity. It's, just, it's it, and I'm not like go have fun on the weekends. Go do that. Like, if that. Like, but make it, if you can't hang out with the people sober, there's then a problem. There's, there's a problem. problem. There's like, a problem right there. go find a group that get, because that group that you can find that you can hang out with sober is going to be a much more meaningful existence than the group that you have to hang out with when you're only drinking. Right. If I could add a statement to that, I also refuse to demonize alcohol because, I mean, we all, we all, no, yeah, we all I, grew up I don't demonize it. No, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I just like to clarify that we're not demonizing alcohol. There's nothing wrong with having a No, I mean, it's, it's, if we're going to, if you want to go into even like religious context, like Jesus drank wine, he turned stuff into wine, like, but like, th there's a point. Like, yeah, where you exactly. Like, worship yeah, exactly. Being, if you worship drugs, would meaning you look to go get. If it's going to gonna make or make break your happen. day, that's when I start yeah, to yeah. think that you need you need help. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, all right, that's that wraps it up, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about more soon. Um, thanks for watching the Patriot Torch, and uh, this is Marco Maya, Ethan Foster, and Travis Brown. We'll see you in the next one.